This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. Aren't you going to say hello? Killed my brother George, you bastard. Hello? Who's this? It's me, Mike. Mike who? Hey, you okay? Yeah, pretty good. I'll kill you all. <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and kill you all. I'm every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. I'll take you. I'll take all of you. And I'll feast on your flesh as I feed on your fear. I'll get you, man. You saw it too. I didn't want to. But you, you, you did. <laughs> You will do. 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 Beat, beat, Richie. I'm gonna have to kill this fucking clown. Welcome to the Losers Club, asshole. You all taste so much better when you're afraid. Hurry, Bev, kill it. Kill me. Oh, you are priceless. I am the eater of wolves and of children. January Embers. My heart burns there too. We all float down here. Yes, we do. I'm not done. I'm not fucking On your done. Knees. I can't. No, I gotta kill the wolf. Fuck, fuck. Fear. Hey everybody, this is Barrel Age Flicks, I'm Lenny, yeah man, and this is... Hey, this is Ron, let's drink and talk some movies. And... Hey guys, this is Sammy, let's do this. We also have... What's going on you fucking nerds, this is Tyler, let's talk about the modern mythology. And finally... This is Stu, let's drink motherfucker. <laughs> Alright you guys, we are of course going to be talking about the one thing that took down the knights who say knee, and it's it. <laughs> okay, it has nothing to do with that, but we are talking about the it. nice that say knee? Yeah, because remember the word it was the word that, that killed him? Oh, shit, yeah, yeah right. They were like, oh, stop it. Like, I said it again. Oh, I just said it. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> super stupid dad joke. Just want to throw that out there at the beginning. I am super fucking stoked about this. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about the book. We have a couple of people on this panel that uh, are well-versed with the book. I only got, I will admit, I got like halfway through. It's 48 fucking hours. For those of you that want to listen to that audiobook, 48 fucking hours. Yep. And, and I'll I, I, I was able to break through 12 in two days. I do. I, well, okay, yeah. I, I, it's I called could, commitment, Lenny. I could go on and commitment. on about why, but I had shit <laughs> going on. Life gets in the fucking way. So anyways. Yeah, not me. No, I, I, so the book, um, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the miniseries that came out in 1990. And we're going to be talking about the two new renditions that came out not too long ago. 2017 for the first and 2019 for the second. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. So um, as always, we're going to start out with the drink. Now, uh, for this particular drink, I know that I have people on this panel that don't like sweet drinks, which is why I was very excited about this because almost every single drink that I looked up that was Pennywise themed or anything to do with it was sweet because it has to do with like the carnival and all that shit. So the drink that I originally found uh, was, was the Pennywise and it called for um, a couple of things that I couldn't find offhand. Yeah. One of them was cotton candy. Couldn't fucking find it anywhere. I looked almost everywhere. Was like a cotton candy vodka or something like that? No, no, no cotton like straight straight actual up, cotton candy. Straight up cotton, cotton candy. candy. Oh, okay. Yes. Spoon sugar. So I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Um, and then the other one was um, bubble gum flavored vodka. Ooh. Couldn't find it. That just sounds terrible. Yeah. So, oh. so um, you know, I also found some drinks that that featured a Mario Mario. How do you say that fucking thing, that word? Mario Mario. A cherry. A cherry. <laughs> Maraschino. Maraschino. I don't fucking Words know. are hard. They are. They are on this podcast, so I'm the, noticing. So the cherry is supposed to represent the red balloon, the iconic red balloon for it. So um, It I, actually looks 
perfect. Like I, yeah. I'm looking at it now, and the and the cherry's like almost expanded just from the the glass and everything, so it looks like a little red balloon. Like that that red bubble of blood that pops. In the I seat. fucking no, that's actually so, a really good looking drink. So, or a clown knows. I had to. I kind of yeah, good one. I kind of made my own rendition. I had to kind of think on the fly a little bit with this, so I did like a combination of a few different things um, in order to make this drink. So it's kind of like my my own drink, my version of Pennywise. Hey, what it is is one and a half ounces of whipped cream vodka. Mm. Um, it has grenadine in it to give like that blood and the water look from when the little bull boy was in the rain. It has the cherry in the water. Georgie. And it also has something I know that you're going to cringe on, but it's going to be great. Does this have tequila in it? No. Oh, okay. Um, I finished it's off. Peanut butter fucking whiskey. I finished it off with cotton candy flavored bang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. So having said that, oh. by all means, please uh, drink up and tell me what you guys think. And by the way, just anybody's wondering, uh, Tyler's not on the uh, this podcast. Oh, yes, thank he got you, thank washed you. down the storm drain with Georgie. Uh, hopefully we'll see him in a few weeks or 27 years, whatever comes first. He's come back all molested by the clown. It's going to be really sad. Oh. <laughs> He's up there floating. Too. <laughs> all right, cheers. Prost. Clink. I Okay, dear God. There we go. All right, tell me what you guys think. Ooh, I like it. Go I, figure. It's I like, like diabetes it. in a cup. Yeah. It's so delicious. Ron, you look like you're going to give it two oh, thumbs up. I can't wait to have Yeah, two <laughs> thumbs up my ass. Whoa, that normally costs um, extra. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yes, yeah. he did. Is that what Eddie from Two the new one wants to do? Oh, I didn't mean to say it that way. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Oh. Again, Usually now this one, Barrel Age Flicks episode will be two ninety nine. This definitely tastes like <laughs> this definitely tastes Thank like cotton you. candy. One thumb is I usually customary. Two cotton thumbs candy. is hardcore. It's a little extra. <laughs> All right. So, All right, uh, Ron, we get, I'm going to give my review. I, I, I think it's going to be. I think you're going to be shocked, but okay. I'm going to give this one thumb up. Okay. I'll take and the it. reason being because it's actually a very good looking drink and the whole theme of it, it actually works out perfectly with the whole uh, cherry down at the bottom and the red. It, it, it looks, looks like blood in the water. It reminds you of it. It yeah. actually looks, it reminds you of it. So it works. The taste, blah. No. Delicious. Not, yeah. Not, not, <laughs> not my, no, not my mug of beer. I, I'm sorry. I, I really do not care for the cotton candy taste. But does, it give, gum you, taste. does it give you a thought of the carnival, though, when you take it? It does. It does. So yeah. it does work, but it's not something I'd order. So yeah. it, it well, is yeah. good for one taste for me, and I'm done. I'm, I'm, it's too sweet for me. That's why I was excited about this too drink. Too sweet. I but like I said, no, it's, it's it's a good pick. It's a good-looking drink, and it fits for the uh, movie. So I, I give you uh, kudos for that. Uh, uh, kudos for that. But uh, uh, one thumb up. So that's, nice. that's mine right there. How about you, Stu? I'm going to give it... Uh, like a one and a half, if I can. If I'm like, that's not bad. That's yeah, just a nub I'll, thumb. I'll, I'll take, I'll take and the, the reason one, one and a nub thumb. I, I think I'm not a big fan of cotton candy bang. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has a weird, weird aftertaste. Like you it know does. that that kind of hangs on your tongue. Yeah. Um, I think maybe like a cotton candy fago. Yeah. Back, uh, back into it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that would have been a little bit better. You know what that needs? More sugar. Yeah, yeah. That's so what basically, it needs. Fago is made by Insane Clown Posse. It's not wow. made by Insane no, no, I mean, not, 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 <laughs> sorry, not no, made, but they, they, yeah. that's their drink yeah. of choice yeah, right there. But I, I, this as far as a cotton candy type soda type drink, I think that would may have been a better backer. And if it was more chilled, I think if it just, yeah, it was yeah. more chilled yeah. and a, a different cotton candy flavor to it that doesn't have that weird flavor. That weird taste that hangs on you, taste, yeah, yeah. Then it would have been a, a two stars or two thumbs up, absolutely. Nice. So it's it's, okay. it's it's knocking on the door up to just a couple small tweaks, and you got it. I'll take. So it. I'm very I, happy. Yeah, I, see, up- I give it more thumbs up for appearance. That's basically what up. But so um, so I would say if any of our listeners actually want to try these variations and leave us a comment or anything on any of our social platforms, please do so because I think. Yeah. You know, I think it'd be cool to maybe try like Pennywise 2.0, you know, everything else. And, and, and I think that'd be just a kind of a cool thing. Yeah. No, it would. Yeah. So a Scar's guard like, versus uh curry Pennywise. Uh, yeah. This, so, so this drink for me, um, uh, same thing. I would give it probably like, I'm, I'm like right on with you, Stu. I, I'm not, I, I, I'll admit it. I'm kind of basic white girl when it comes to, I like cotton candy flavored things. Well, we know your chick. Yes, very much. So he's our other chick on the show, people. So I have the chick perspective. Anyways, (laughs) is that what we're calling it? Yeah, that's what it's called. I'm in touch with, with that side. Yeah, I'm I'm actually. in touch with his feminine side. I'm on with that (laughs) one. But anyways, so, um, it's, it, I like the taste. It definitely gives you that instant sort of, um, that that instant sort of like I'm at the carnival kind of a, a vibe. 
Um, and again, the look is very cool because it's very much like like blood in the rainwater of the gutter. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, we will definitely post a picture of that on Instagram yeah. so you guys can take a well, look at it. Well, even when you're building it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like super cool. I'm like, that's yeah. the balloon and da 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 da. It was, it's a really beautiful drink. No, so, I, it, that's, that's, why I, that's why I give it a thumb because if it didn't look good, this would have been probably like a half a thumb. Yeah, in my opinion. thumb. Yeah. But I was really happy with how it came out. Like I saw, I was like trying to, like I said, I couldn't find the bubblegum vodka. I couldn't find cotton candy. Oh. And I'm in the ABC store and I'm like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta think of something on the fly. So I was talking to my wife on the phone. She was kind of throwing out ideas as well. So kudos to to my wife if she's listening to this. That would she be the helped. infamous Hobbs who hopefully yes. will join us. She'll one be day. joining us one yes. day. But she, she's she, awesome. Uh, she helped me out and can give me some ideas. And she was doing a little bit of research. And then I I thought, well, I'll do some a little bit of combining. And then I saw the grenadine because originally that other drink that I was talking about it called for um, bubble gun uh, vodka, grape juice, cotton candy, and raspberry liqueur. And so yeah, Ooh. yeah, you take the cotton candy. A wad of it, and you put it in the in a, like a martini glass, uh-huh. yeah. And then you make your your mixture of all the, the alcohol and everything else, and then you pour it over top of it, and then you drink it. Yeah, but the thing but is, it's, this this looks more for this, the movie. I feel like this more, yeah, because the other drink, like when you actually see it on on the picture with the grape juice, it just looks like Muddy. black water. You, yeah. you know what? Which, you know what that other one because they're always talking about gray water. And yeah, stuff. you exactly. know what that other one would have been good for actually. If we, but we did a beer instead, but that would have been good for Killer Clowns from Outer Space with the cotton candy and everything. Yeah. I don't know. That yeah. straight up sounds like you lick the like, vomit off of Tilt Whirl. It sounds terrible. Oh, well. But this was this was I think this in the end tasted better than what that would have. So for those of you that are listening, if you decide to try out, if you can get your hands on on bubblegum vodka, please message us and let us know where the fuck you found it. But um, if you decide to make this drink, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of it. Yeah, definitely. You, know? you could actually make it by getting basically double bubble, popping it in a mason jar, pouring regular vodka over it, letting it sit for 24 hours, basically overnight, straining it, and boom. Ha! Huh. It'll never, take up that flavor, you think? You know, it will. I, it will, because that's how the... Um, I don't want to give away a spoiler, but that's how I'm going to make future candy-infused vodkas. And okay. that's apparently per... Some of the online sources. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a tease it. for an episode coming cotton up. Cotton candy vodka. Not cotton candy. Um, you candy, said bubble gum. Candy, candy corn vodka. I wonder what that would taste like. You're Delicious. dick, Lenny. What? You're I love dick, candy Lenny. corn. Oh, oh wait, I'm right. so glad Lenny's back. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I ruin the surprise? <laughs> you ruined. You, you've been ruined. <laughs> All right, never mind. Sorry. I just popped in my head. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, we will. I'm just. Oh, I, we don't have any like, uh, you know, because it's Lenny who's running this. So there's no like, <laughs> there's no like full on structure when it comes to this, um, but I'd love to start off the conversation and just kind of like organically go from there. But I'd love to see like what, what was the first thing that you guys, each of you like encountered? Was it the television series? Was it the book? Or was it the new movie? And then you went back to see, like for me, it was a television series. That was the first time I had encountered it. that that that, that storyline. Yeah. Uh, to me, it would be the television series, but the thing is, I never watched it when I was younger in the early 90s. I actually always heard about it being one of the scariest things. Like, I've talked to a lot of friends that were, you know, when I was in my late teens, yeah. and they said, yeah, that kid, that movie scared me when I was younger. I was like, I never saw it. I remember renting this movie at a library, actually, of all places, and uh, checking it out, and uh, at the time, it was okay. I mean, but I was also like late '90s when I watched this. That's that's how late it was. Even though so you're like 12, 13. Yeah, no, yeah. I think I was yeah about around that time. And basically, it, it wasn't anything good to me. But the thing is, I didn't appreciate movies like I do now. Um, back then, I didn't know Tim Curry as much and everything else. I mean, Tim Curry is a, a great fucking actor. I mean, he's he's a he's an iconic character yes, actor. He's he does, amazing. Does a good character actor. He does a lot of things like you know, fucking legend, um, fucking Rocky Horror Picture Show, Rocky Horror Picture Show, of course, uh, Congo and stuff like that. Um, but overall that's when I saw it. And at the time I didn't care for it, but yeah. over time getting older, I learned to appreciate it more. So. Right. That cult classic feel. Yeah. How about um, you, Sammy? <laughs> I actually, um, all right. So I'm going to take you down a little nostalgia real quick. So I actually saw this when I was about eight at a sleepover. Nice. At, um, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Oh, okay. Um, so it was, uh, at this girl that I knew who was, this, she, there's no, there's no way. So she's just spoiled brat. She's the only child just had everything and literally showed it. And she was younger than me at this time. So I might've actually been like 10, but anyways, I actually spent the entire time after like, I saw like the Georgie scene. I was like, fuck this. And I literally spent the rest of the sleepover and the it movie 
underneath the blanket talking to my now and still best friend. <laughs> so we we bonded over our mutual fear. Yeah. And then <laughs> That's awesome. Um so that that was my, you know, my childhood experience. It was the miniseries, of course. Um then I started dating this dude in high school and he's totally warped me over the last 20 years and now I absolutely love Pennywise. I've read the book. I've watched numerous things. I love the new movies. Um, and I literally have so much Pennywise shit around my house. It's bananas. So no, she's a huge, huge fan of it. I the love thing is, it. I think she's more, you're a big fan of the book awesome. more than anything. Oh, I love uh, always, always um, the book. I yeah. mean, yeah. I love, I love the book. No, I've got to say like the book just real quick. I want to throw it out there because I'm still trying to get through it. But one, it is a long fucking book, but I've got to say, like, especially the audio book, the guy that they got to it's, read, he's good. he is fucking good. Like, all the voices he does are right on. His his voice of Pennywise, I would say, is definitely... It's good. It, it, it gets on the edge of your bones. It's fucking good. I'm going to have to listen to that. I, did, oh, I didn't dude. know we that he does it. a good... Oh, man. We've he, owned it. He does a great fucking job, and... Uh, the the, I'm just the thing sure I love about the book, the right and, one. yeah, and this is this is with was this the version you're listening to? Yes, score. So with any well, audio, well, what, what, who, which uh, version um, is that? So it is available in audio, aud- audible. Excuse me. Um, it is of course Stephen King. It has the current Pennywise as the face, and it is read by. Oh, you know what? On Audible, they give you all of that, and like the when they're like, "Welcome to Audible," and they like tell you who's reading it. But on here, it actually does not. Because yeah, usually sells like the narration. Can, by you know, you can maybe Google it, but he's really that, good. That guy, um, I think we're gonna look that up real quick, just because out of curiosity, because he does a really fucking good job. Like when they have the scenes where like someone's getting killed or mm-hmm. Pennywise like gets really intense and comes up. This dude, he it's like he's acting. You're listening to someone acting because he does. He like goes full out with these with the tutorial. You're like, oh, Stephen fuck, Weber is the one who narrates uh, the uh, it from there Stephen King. Dude, are, you, so, are you sure? Because there's numerous versions. I wouldn't know what version. I think it is. Stephen Weber sounds familiar. But anyways, so the, yeah, the audio book is fantastic. Um, it goes way more in depth, as you guys know as well. So, anyways, uh, Stu, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, um, coming out from a latchkey kid situation, uh, I actually remember the miniseries. Um, but when it, was it a, aired, it was a, a two part, right? Yes, it was uh, two days in a row, two nights in a row on ABC. I remember Disney watch, of all places. Yes. I remember watching them. I was probably about eight years old at the time watching, you know, at, when it was first airing. Um, I absolutely fucking loved it. And I was already a fan of Stephen King. I had started to read some Stephen King books. Yeah. And I remember uh, my aunt who lived across the street. She was also a big Stephen King fan. And so she actually had the book. So I immediately borrowed the book and started just hunkering down and reading that fucker. Um, and it was amazing. It was. I was a huge, huge fan. And you love Tim Curry as uh, Yes. Tim Curry is amazing. I, I love Tim Curry and everything he did. I was so sad that he got out of acting acting um, after his stroke, his, yeah. his major stroke. That's Because he's in a wheelchair right yeah, now. Yeah, but he's, he still does a lot of voiceovers, a lot of voice work. Yeah. Um, and he started actually showing up at uh, panels and you know, making a public appearance is now recently, which is which is good. Here's That's a good cool. question for you guys. What is your favorite Tim Curry role? I mean, we can talk about the actor. I'm just curious. Rocky what is Horror your fa- Picture Show. I figured that was going to be yours. Love it. I love him. Okay. This is a little weird. On, do you guys remember the TV show Monk? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He played the whale. Um, oh, <laughs> he so did. obscure and random. It, but it was so secret. perfect for Tim Curry. Yeah. yeah I'll give it that. I'll give it, it that. And I just, leave it to you to miss like, the most fucking like, random ass. You know that that Swiffer commercial? He was phenomenal. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, he was perfect in that fucking role as the one who basically made Monk become monk yeah. <laughs> all right and, and just to know that it was tim fucking curry and this giant fucking fat suit who became you know adrian monks you know all, all you know, ultimate rival it was awesome <laughs> how about you lenny honestly i would say the it movie because the thing that i like about tim curry is he has he has as as any great actor does he has such range yes and with pennywise he looked like he had fun with the role. No, and that's just it, is that that I feel like he really made it his own, yeah. you know? Because um, him and Bill Skarsgård, they're very, very different approaches, mm-hmm. approaches, and we'll get to that in a minute. But for Tim Curry's version, he had to have moments where he was he was um, enraged and, and frightening and, you know, t- instilling fear. Then there are moments when he was kind 
and trying to be sweet. And then there are moments when he like he had to because he's the clown and he has to deceive and, you know, do deception, deception Deception. with with children and stuff. And even with the adults, like when he starts mocking them and stuff like Mm -hmm. he has this full range of different emotions and things that he has to portray as the clown. Yeah. Through he, super fucking heavy makeup. Yeah. Yeah. All right, which yeah. Is, you know, uh, wouldn't that be considered like the, what is it I called? Thought, like pancake makeup? Yes. Like it's like, yeah. Yeah. In uh, fact, I, I know I, basically I, in I mean, that's skin. one thing we, that's yeah. definitely you know, something covered. That's definitely something we have to talk about in the episode. We can talk about it now. Um, before I, I'm going to get to my Tim Curry is mine's is the Prince of Darkness from Legend. I I, I love him. In he Legend. is really good in Legend. I thought he just pulled that role so oh, well. Oh man, I got to say, talk about yeah, heavy yeah, makeup. That has that. fucking yeah. hooves. Yeah, <laughs> Muppet yeah. Treasure Island. No, he was, really was good fucking phenomenal. Right. Thank you. <laughs> I thought he rocked his Long Dude. John. Ron yeah. thought I was insane. He said Long John Silver and uh, Muppet Treasure. Fuck. It's hey, look, awesome. But um, the one thing I have a R. question R. about Henson. is what is your favorite rendition of Pennywise? I know that the the newer movie is closer to the book. But yes, that is true. Sorry, guys, that was it, my I guess book. it also goes to the same and who is your favorite Pennywise, but also the, just the, the whole, because his is more of like a circus clown, more of like, you know, like more modern, where Pennywise is like, isn't he like more of like old school or yeah, something like that? Like, like the 1920s. Yeah, 1920s or something like that. So which one's more creepier? But that, I mm-hmm. think the Tim Curry version of the clown would have done better to try for what, uh, what it was trying to do, which was lure lure people into a false sense. See, of... See, I thought about that too. Uh, of, of you know safety. And no, see, I disagree. I'm sorry. Well, what else? If is I there? see the what 1920s, if I see a creepy ass no, 1920s, no, 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 I'm not going to go near him. I'm like, uh, no, fuck you. Uh, but if I see the Tim Curry clown, I'm like, hey, okay, nothing, nothing to be, no danger here. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, to disregard what he said because it's <laughs> wrong. Um, no, be- uh, in all honesty, because because the way that it is portrayed in the book, all right, is the current 2017 2019 version. The costume is very different. Yeah, very old. It didn't school. Ha- which I'm sorry, they didn't have as many dyed fabrics and shit back in the 1920s. No, you're absolutely right. So, no, I'm sorry. Again, go figure. Steve's wrong. So then, the, I'm just leave the them Skarsgård I, 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 version was more book accurate. Yes, yes. but he also but the, was the, way more. I'm, no, I'm sorry. But Again, I agree. I, I agree with him on oh, the whole. What it is no, no, to do. no, because the whole thing is that he's a playful clown. He attracts children. The other so one doesn't attract. The yes, one looks he does. creepy. No, he doesn't uh, look creepy. So Wait a minute, creepy. Was, Have you? On. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. So Pennywise, um, Bill Skarsgård. I would, I have to disagree a little bit because he has. Thank you. He's got the blue eyes mm-hmm. and like. And he, oh no no! He, he only purpose, has the blue eyes. He trying the children. to be right. When he, when he's he's and it's, it's different. Yes. He changes, and I will give credit to that. That that right. they didn't do Tim Curry. That he does change his eye color to that of family members. I'm sorry. When Tim Curry in. is straight out raging, okay, I'm going to kill you all. I hate you, especially children. Your fear, damn. And like he literally just looks like an alcoholic, like really angry, <laughs> like <laughs> out of a, a more clear. real no, 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 world. No, 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 the, no, a no, monster. no, 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 but you said the innocence, and oh, if I see him like that, fuck him, fuck oh, that clown. Wait, okay, no well, I don't think any of the clowns no are way. raging, I'm not going to go fucking near him, so, but if I see, you know, Pennywise, no, and he's like, oh, da, 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 da. Georgie, and he's got like the balloon, he's got like these blue eyes, and he generally seems sweet, now the fucked up thing with the current one, and I do love this, because again, Bill Skarsgård, the actor, the fucking floating eye, which actually our Lenny can do, the fucking floating eye thing, you do the floating so eye? so deceptive. I don't know. Not nearly as. Not as, as like not far, as well as Skarsgård. That lazy, that lazy, and it will drift. Yeah, Skarsgård's though. That's a hundred percent natural, and that's awesome. Yeah, you do. I didn't even know I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny looks fucking creepy all the time. <laughs> but uh, when, like, I'm sorry, if I see Tim Curry's, you know, happy clown versus uh, Skarsgård when he's trying to lure that that fucking Mikhail Gorbachev chick, you know, little little girl, the one with the port wine stain on her face. Oh, uh, her little her little birthmark. <laughs> <laughs> so, she made me so sad. No, for real, I can't. She I, made I, me so sad. I couldn't watch that scene. Yeah. Like, it's hard. Bit by yeah. her face. But oh, when, dude. When he's learn, like trying to lure her shark. in, I'm like, that's all the danger bells ringing in the world right there. But if Tim Curry's clown is trying to lure people in when he's being nice, that's not danger uh, bells ringing. Oh no 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 no! no. Let's, let's put it under no no. Let's Tim put Tim Curry's Curry nice under clown the, under the looks fucking like a child bleachers. Molester, just right, Lisa, he's a little rapey. <laughs> right, okay. he's a little rapey. Okay, and I'm sorry if I saw fucking Tim Curry. If I had my choice between the Pennywises under that bleacher scene, I would totally go with Scar Scar. Curry would be fucking terrifying. 
Okay. Uh, Very much like, well, congratulations, you're now an Amber Alert. Well, like, it's terrible. Uh, so I, one of the things I want to say about, because this is something that I noticed with the two films that I really, really, really wanted to bring up in the show, actually. So since we're doing this comparison, I'll do it now. Tim Curry's character very much, uh, in my opinion, is like he, at times, especially when he's pandering to the kids, he strikes me as like a dad who's pandering to his kids. He's Whoa. got like that dad quality who's like, I'm trying to be the funny clown, he, he, he. But with with Bill Skarsgar, it's like, it's different. Like when he's pandering to kids, it's like he's a child himself. And even though he's a grown man, he has that ability with his voice and just his face and everything else to really, it's almost like they're talking to another child. Yeah. That's what yeah. makes him so fucking like, re, like, like a uh, captivating because his eyes are nice and blue and he's kind of, he's kind of funny looking. Well, and, and he has he, the physicality to do the role. I'm yeah. like, Curry, like All freaking. Right. You know how I compare this to? Now, the whole thing about the uh, the two Pennywises, Tim Curry and Bill Skarsgård, I kind of relate them to the Joker. You know, the Jack Nicholson Joker and the um, no, Heath Ledger Joker. <laughs> Sammy, really? Sammy's classic line t-shirts will be really? eventually available if you're on Barely Twice. Anyways. <laughs> I'm always wrong, am I? <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, so I compared to the Joker. No, no, like, that would be Stu. You. Every single time Stu and I have an after. Oh, really, Stu? That's a fascinating perspective. So you're wrong. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I kind of relate them into the same vein because it Jack Nicholson was more of like the goofy, like almost gangster where the Heath Ledger was more terrifying anarchy, more yeah. like, you know, horrifying. That's different exactly. embodiments of the same character. Like, you're, when you listen to Tim Curry's laugh. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? You do? Well, you better let the poor guy out. <laughs> yeah, and then when you hear Bill Skarsgård, his is more horrifying. <laughs> I, yeah. That's how I relate it to. Because I, I Why'd think you cut off the demon-y part? That's what's really terrifying when he's like... Yeah, his laugh is, his <laughs> like, laugh is able to like go down into the like octaves, his depth. The octaves, everything. And then the other thing is when he's like in the... And we'll, we'll play... We're, so one of the things we, we have for you guys is we're going to be playing the soundbite from the newer version and the televised version of the um, sewer drain scene. And we're going to do that here in a second and we'll, we'll discuss those and compare the two. But I will say right off the bat is that when Bill Skarsgård's character is like laughing and the child's laughing along with him and in within that laughter, there's something in it that triggers something that he, that, that, that he wants to like eat. And you see him all of a sudden, he's, his eyes, mini kinda, stroke. he goes into like a stroke and he kind of, he's like, and he just kind of, you can tell he's yeah. But there's one way face him. is drooling, one yeah, eye is drifting. He, he, he all off. of a sudden just kind of fucking. That's when he senses, ooh, there's something in this kid I really want, and he kind of drifts off for a second. That's fucking creepy. Yeah, yes. but there's one thing I didn't like about the Tim Curry version that I'm I'm gonna bring up is that his your float, oh your it just sounds perverted as fuck. I'm sorry. Again, Compared to Bill Scars was, more, was in, more terrifying. The Tim Curry sounded a little perverted there. <laughs> yeah. are, 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 Tim I, Curry uh -huh, uh -huh. Tim Curry sounds like a a real monster that can't exist in this world. Yeah, I know. It just sounds you'll just the way float. he said exactly. you'll float. And float. And he's just doing it so like <laughs> sexual. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what it is to the, the to the dead lights creature that is it. All right, let's it's, go ahead. It's feeding that, that primal need in him. All right, so let's go to, ahead and listen to, to the first clip. Now, the kid's pickle? I don't... What? It tickles his pickle. What? <laughs> all right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. All right. That we're... was more terrifying than all of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically the... I'll be in the next remake. Thank you. <laughs> this is the, basically the whole scene from the uh, miniseries of Georgie and Pennywise's first encounter. Or their only encounter, actually. Sorry. Hi, Georgie. Sounds kind of dad-like. going to say hello? I'm yeah. telling you, when it gets to that part... Oh... oh. Come on, bucko. Bucko. Don't you want a balloon? In my pants. <laughs> You're not supposed to take stuff from strangers. My dad said so. Very wise of your dad, Georgie. Very wise indeed. I, Georgie, am Pennywise, the dancing clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other. <laughs> he right? He does a good job, though. So. Yeah. The thing that makes it super creepy is the fucking music right now. Yeah. This. My ghost! Exactly. Go on, kiddo. Dig it. Mm. Dig it. 
Oh, you want it, don't you, Georgie? Oh, of course you do. And there's cotton candy and oh, fries he wants and it. all sorts of surprises down here. And balloons. It's not debatable, the pedo. Oh. I'm sorry, it's just not. All right, here it is. Huh? Oh, yes. They flow. Yeah, dude. <laughs> ah, Stu's they face flow. is so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. See that that's short. That the first one's yeah, extremely yeah. short. The second one, the the, uh, the Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård is extremely. It's almost like two minutes long. But it, just that you'll float. I'm like, yeah, that part is creepy. That part is yeah. like the kid. Yeah, like, it's that's so bit... fucking ominous. And because that's what he wants to do. He wants to get him down there and wants to get all these fucking kids floating in the fucking deadlights. And because that's how he's going to survive and feed himself for the next 27 years. Yeah, is he needs them that. Fear that 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 buffet of t- pure terror floating around him in order to survive, yeah. and so he That's knows what my diet consists of just pure terror. Exactly, terror half yeah. doesn't. And mean. Ron just consists of pure sugar. That's why he's about to lose a foot to diabetes. Yeah, that yeah, drink see. did not help Lenny. Diabetes. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Diabetes. All right, you're already ready for the second clip. This is the uh, Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, this go. is I actually enjoy this one. This one was done really well. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, Georgie. I like this version so much better, actually. I'm not going to lie. What a mm-hmm. nice boat. Do you want it back? Um, yes, please. You look like a nice boy. I bet you have a lot of friends. Three. Can I also explain like, how much better this Georgie three? is than the yeah. original? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that a million dollars. I mean, this this kid can act. He's got that. some chops. Oh, yeah. well, you got to remember. It was a TV movie. No, like, again and, and later. We'll, we'll talk. Better about direction. Yeah. Georgie. I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. Oh, well, I'm Pennywise the dancing clown. I like that little bell ring. Well, it's, yeah. it's the way he does Pennywise. it. He does it to be playful. Yeah. I know, no, I yeah. like it. Georgie. Georgie. Yeah, meet Pennywise. he's definitely, it's more like talking to another child How yeah. than an, an adult wearing oh, Which is going to instantly costume. bring out that trust. Right, exactly. What are you doing in the sewer? A storm blew me away. Blew the whole circus away. <laughs> Can you smell the circus, Georgie? I like this part. There's Again, peanuts. it's accurate to the book when he's talking yeah. about the Again. smell yep. of everything, and yep. then literally yep. underneath it all is just the smell of and decay, death, and rot. Yep. Popcorn? Like a circus Popcorn. really does smell. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh-huh. Sadness. What right right here. <laughs> I love that laugh, but listen to this. When he has that look. Yeah, the kid's going to laugh, and then right here. And you hear a growl. Right there. He, like, trails off. It literally, you see the mask almost slip, literally. Almost come off, and yeah. then you see how much of a monster it is. Yeah. Without your bow, you don't want to lose it, Georgie. Bill's going to kill you. Bill's going to kill you. Yeah, dude. Fucking. Manipulation. Yeah. Super. I love his teeth. Yeah. A little too bu- uh, too buck teeth the uh, fangs yeah. off. And that's right. And by the way, Stu, the reason him. why there was a quick edit right there is because there was like a whole scene with a storm and a woman putting a towel up, so I tried to cut that oh, out. Oh yeah, the lady with the cat yeah. that just yeah. watches yeah. the so child I, get yeah. That was just sound effects, so that's why I kind of love out. dairy for those parental tips. But that one of the things that it is Throughout the entire fucking book is yeah, people no. in dairy are always turning a fuck. blind eye yeah. because and otherwise they don't want to be on the. Well, that, that reminds me of the whole thing with uh, Ben when he's getting yeah. beat up by uh, what was his it's, name? Henry Bowser. Henry ba- 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 Bowers. 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 Bowser. Bowers. Sorry, Bowser. And, yeah, basically from Mario Brothers. That's right. <laughs> just instead of spitting freaking fireballs, he stabs you in the bathroom. Oh yeah. No, this. Uh, so yeah, well, one of the things I like about that scene too, that where they cut away to that woman, is that one. The townspeople are, are oblivious as as it is, but also I don't think they're the oblivious. Point. No, 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 they're, they're not oblivious, but they're, they're just they're turning, turning a blind eye. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Well, a better way of putting it. But one of the things I also I think is important about that scene is it shows how fucking fast it happens because she's kind of like she sees the kid, she's like oh, da, da. and literally within it, the the whole from the point of where Pennywise fucking digs into his arm with his teeth and the kids start screaming to the point where the kids dragged in the drain you don't hear another word is maybe 15 seconds at the most mm-hmm. 
And it just gives you, like, you know, as a parent, it really chills your fucking blood to think how fast your kid can disappear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's fast enough that even with adults around, they might not fucking catch it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, Which taps into a, a different layer of underlying fear. That's why you raise fat lawyer. kids. They're harder to steal. Because <laughs> <laughs> kids too heavy. Fuck Unless it. Unless your, your perpetrator has Kit Kats. Then but I, one, thing, <laughs> one thing I loved is I loved But then they're movie. not running too fast no, after all him. I'm thinking of is, you know, you're like, you put one and like the kid just comes in. Or he's got like a piece of candy. Piece of candy. Or he's got it on a fish line. He's like, oh, almost got it. Oh, oh, oh. I, I fucking loved how they actually showed Georgie with his arm off and just screaming and yelling because I think in the uh, miniseries it just kind of just oh, cuts off right there. Yeah, it cuts but off. They, it was a TV the movie, Jaws so they could... for treatment when he's mauled by okay. the shark in the beginning. Yeah. Well, you have to admit for a, a made-for-TV movie, oh, no, it was decent. It was. It was they had gruesome. so much gore. Yeah, to, uh, that it's still surprising this day they how much it. they got away with. Yeah, the yes, it was late right. at night. No, uh, absolutely. God but still, bless the, the only late thing though, eighties, early nineties. It was good, but that same view of Tim Curry and he's just opening his mouth with those with that. You know, the, you oh, the, the denture teeth that they put inside. What, what I still, I still think Bill Skarsgård is fucking like when his his mouth just it, opens yeah, up. Almost the mini stroke, just opens the lip up is down, the drool's out. No, see, I, love, I love it when teeth his de- are like needles. The deadlights when he opens his whole fucking mouth and his the whole head opens up. Yeah, and you see the top of his eyes like just shrinking back and everything. It's, oh no, it's and like a shark. Like, it's like a shark. They roll back white as he. They Fuck reminded me more of the worms from Beetlejuice. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh the wow. Sandworms. The face. That's yeah, a good yeah, comparison. Yeah, that. yeah, the sandworms. Yeah. But no, um, I was going somewhere with that. We were talking about that whole thing. But Scar Scarred, more playful, loops him in, no, rips but, him, eviscerates him. Yeah, so uh, I, I will, a uh, fun little fact, you know, being a parent and all, I was. I well, we all the, are on this panel. Yeah, yes. I went to the movies with a friend of mine um, when that movie came out, just him and I. Because my wife's like, yeah, I'm not fucking going to see that. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go with a friend. So her. I went with this this guy who uh, I was friends with um, from work. And I will never forget it. I was sitting in the theater. And when that scene happened where George's arm gets ripped off and you actually fucking see it. And he's bleeding and he's crawling for his life and he gets fucking dragged. In the middle, <laughs> in the middle of that scene, it was dead fucking quiet. And, and out of nowhere, like in the dark, I'm sitting there and I go, that is fucking not cool. Like really loud. <laughs> And, and my friend was like, dude, chill out. I'm like, no, that's fucked up. And like, <laughs> people started laughing, like, oh, wow. You know, that was the only part of the movie this where I was about to go fucking psycho up that's in a here. very passionate parent in the yeah. audience. Like, not fucking cool, man. But then after that, I was like, okay, this movie's awesome. But like, that scene was, at least initially, was hard for me to like sit through. So, which one, let me ask you this. Which one's harder? The scene with uh, Georgie? Georgie or the scene with that little girl with the birthmark so, on her face? So, here's the thing with that. I, I actually, to be honest with you, I got to say the little girl. And the reason why, it's hard. Because it's like with Georgie, Georgie is, he's a little bit more um, defenseless because he's a little kid. He's a but, happy kid versus yeah, a, a happy sad, kid. isolated And that's kid. the part that makes it sad too is with the girl is that she's already a nobody, an outcast. And, and, and people treat her differently because of this birthmark on her face. And then this is her fate. She gets fucking, she gets <clears throat> mutilated and killed by this fucking piece of shit monster like that's not that's not fucking well cool. and I, no. I think it's also because Pennywise not only is a master of manipulation obviously but like you see this sensitive side of Pennywise and it's like oh you're gonna it makes it and the fact that the little girl is so removed and so so isolated and 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 honestly sad she latches onto it so fucking fast yeah like because at first she's like oh no like you're scary Fuck you, clown! It's like I'm out, and, and then, then the then he moment does that he starts crying, thing. No, it shows works. that vulnerability it exactly. And it, and I think no, what's, exactly. it was I think what's great about that scene is that it really shows just how good Pennywise is at manipulating kids. He can manipulate happy go lucky kids, and he can even manipulate the kids that are cautious and kind of like already kind of downtrodden in life, mm-hmm. and they're expecting it. And he still was able to appeal to, he finds where that weakness is really fast, mm-hmm. appeals to it, and strikes. All right, here's a good yeah, question. I think the the worst scene to me, to, to have probably experienced as a child, would have been the Hall of Mirrors. Because you have. Oh, that was that's fucked a up. Fucked yes, up that was fucked You up. have Bill on one side, an adult that he, he's already a had a kind of a weird relationship going, with. The yeah. kid. This poor the, kid, if between Bill and Tozier, man, exactly. this kid's going to be like, and they just yelled at me all the time, and then they asked me about the drinks, and yeah. I just don't yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Isn't that the same I mean, kid? Yeah, that that's myself. the same kid yeah. that Richie went off on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 She grabs this him in the, in the restaurant, kid. and uh, someone that is a fan, and he grabs a kid. I ain't scared of you! You don't scare me! What the fuck? 
And the kid's like, uh, no, man, it's a line from when you should, what the fuck? No, and this is exactly why none of y'all are allowed to go to an actual bar, okay? Because, like, if poor kids. You're like, what's your fucking problem, kid? I don't care. You're short. Yeah, stupid. Like, I'm not fucking afraid of you. Like, so to have, you. Like, what uh, the fuck, dude? Yeah. 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 So to be no in the Hall of Mirrors, shots, you have you have it who has already lost his shit and isn't even trying to, you know, trying to, you know, Mm-mm. fool the kid. No, no he's, he's like, like no, nope. <laughs> I am gonna fucking get you, and I'm doing it, and with a smile on my face because I know he can't stop me. And knowing that as a kid, he sees this adult who's supposed to Save be him. protected yeah. by. He's like, are, are you gonna do something? Well, no, no, <laughs> seeing Bill, him try, Bill is like, yeah, yeah seeing I mean, him try, but and so believing that it's gonna happen, and then all of a sudden that last crack happens, and you're like, oh, and you fucking, oh, his face wow. goes wow. His eyes are sideways and shit. And he's like, eh. <laughs> actually, if I'm not mistaken, I believe. That was actually supposed to be almost a nod to Nicholson through the door. Yeah, I can believe that. Yeah, and I yeah that thing where his face was changing constantly when he's smashing his head against the yes. glass was fucking perfect. It, but it was, <laughs> but you know what? That scene was horrifying. But I still think, as a child, I think that would be the more horrifying I don't know, to I go through. As an adult, well, it'd no. be even worse because you're trying yes. to save the oh, fucking Oh no, no, kid exactly. And, That's what I'm saying. And it's fodder. I, at least with the with the girl and stuff like that. You he he didn't it. he didn't go bad uh, um, until that last second. When he did, he just fucking ate her. All oh, right. Oh, I see. You know why? And though? Georgie, he didn't go bad until the last second when he fucking grabbed him. That's All true. Right? He didn't make the kid just sit there and be terrified for what had to have seemed like forever. Oh my god! To Could that you imagine child. how like like ravenous he must have been if he's amped by fear and that child exactly up for that long? Exactly. That's Ugh. what I'm saying. To me, that that had been the worst yeah, scene that's for actually, a child. I, I would okay, agree. Well, here, I, I think, whoa, we have that on air. Uh-huh. I actually agreed with Stu. I think I have to relate <laughs> something here because I think we already talked about it. But if you were a child, who would you have been more afraid of? The Tim Curry or the Bill Skarsgård? Like Skarsgård. I'd have been more afraid of Skarsgård. Skarsgård, okay. hands down, dude. Especially when So if it was Tim like, Curry underneath the bleachers. Uh, let's put it this way. When there's a scene where they're in the house and Skarsgård's character comes out of the – he, like, untangles himself out of the fucking fridge. Oh, yes. Great. And that kid with the broken arm. I would have, I would If I was Eddie, I would have fucking shit myself. He, get, he stands up. He's tall as fuck. And his eyes – he's not even trying to hide. His eyes are all, like, orange. He's got the huge fucking teeth. And he's coming towards him, and he's mocking him. He's not even remotely – like, he's fucking making fun of him as he's screaming in terror. D- uh, dude – Hands down, as a child, that would have fucked me up for life. Now, when Beverly hit him with that uh, that fence post or something like no, that. No, no, she stabbed him through the face with... with through like the, the eye. The, the, through the and eye. kind of locked him into that that, <sighs> that shape that he was currently in having. Yeah. yeah. And Actually, and that was the werewolf. Was fucked now, up and his teeth were all... This is a question oh, that I have to ask because I've noticed Ugh. it within the first chapter one and chapter two movie. This is, has nothing to do with the first cool. one because it didn't happen. Every single time you see blood from, from it, it's always... Floating up. That has to do with the whole floating, like you will float and everything else. Do you think that's what it relates to? Of with course the it blood does. always yeah. floating up? That's why he is always saying float. Okay. Float. See, I, I was always trying to figure that out with the whole blood always going up. Well, see, up. if you listen to the audio book, man. It, a He's lot, just full of hot air. I'm telling you, the cool, the cool <laughs> thing about this, about the book, uh, and, and this, is with any, honey. this is with any Stephen King book and with any story, um, and why it drives me so nuts. Stephen King, if you're listening to this, which I know you're fucking not. Um, you're amazing. Why you're amazing, but why, sir? Why that oh why? Sense. Why do you let movie studios take these amazing fucking novels of yours and just bend it over and ram their dick hard into your books? Over and over again. I can't count how many movies. I'll give you a perfect that example. Was super graphic. It was very graphic. I know. I'll give you a perfect example. Dreamcatcher. I yes. I read I read Dreamcatcher cover to cover yeah. and it was mm-hmm. fucking incredible. And when Another I saw one's Christine. Yeah, and when I saw the preview, I was like, no fucking way they made that a movie. Fuck yeah, I'm going. I can't wait. And like halfway through the movie, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? They ruined it. So I I I think that's pretty normal with every book to movie. Well, I will say this. What I'm trying to get at is that with, with, uh, and that's not necessarily true. The Harry Potter books are pretty close. Although real quick, I did like the tongue in in cheek that they did with this, with Bill, like fighting the movie exec over it. They're like, where's the ending? And he's like, why could you guys just do it? I wrote wrote it. And they're like, it doesn't sell. Like Uh, we need it. Yeah. But no, also I did that as a, a kind of commentary on how everybody felt about the it book as a, as a whole. Yeah. The, the, the first 90% of it. Amazing. The last 10%. It goes really no, no. fucking and crazy. Again, I love again in the current ones, they have fucking Stephen King even poking fun of himself. It's like, I don't sign it. I don't like the ending. Like, yeah. It's hilarious. And Lenny, what were you saying? Sorry, well, I was, no, it's fine. I was going to just say that with, um, with the book, if you get around Ron touch, like listening to the book, like when you're at work or whenever you have time, 
it's worth it because there's a lot of little background detail and shit like the like the the black spot the the easter egg explosion all the stuff that they talk about they ironworks actually, ironworks, ironworks yep all these bad things that happen to dairy they actually talk about it in more detail in the book and really like oh, oh yeah, yeah no it's, okay, absolutely. And it's the fucking, reason they're doing that it's though so great is because they're not going to make a 49 hour fucking long movie no, why? I, no, I, <laughs> why? I get, I get, they're I get not that. no but now would you say this it's would be good at, would you think this would be good as like Fine. a six-part miniseries on tv like if yeah, yeah or like almost hbo where they would yeah, actually get more long series. form storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would yeah. have been and, fucking and a Pennywise great. origin. Hey, anybody that's like able to hook that up, I think would be amazing. Yeah, like about how he landed on Earth. Well, like no, all of it. Like imagine seeing all of these events and what the, he was over the years Shit, and the centuries like, and everything. millennia of him just fucking yeah. eating and eating. That would be a great. I could actually if that was a mini series. Yeah, that would Net, be if Netflix like or, or one of these like real made, quick question. Amazon made like a mini series. It'd be great. So we're talking about the deadlights, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's a, like the whole thing with Pennywise is this 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 thing. Okay, which when is what he actually down, is. Yeah, yeah, I know. But like honestly, like when these when the deadlights are coming through, when they're you know in the newer film, and you see how the walls are lined with like literally what looks like his fucking teeth. I honestly was mm-hmm. wondering if that was actually like Pennywise, like maybe some no. like that was the that was the meteor that had crashed in. Uh, the, it's the, lined with flesh. Uh, how H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a million. Remember, I mean, remember it, it, this, isn't, you know I mean? this isn't a, it like a Pennywise isn't a hundred percent of this universe. You can play. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is this maybe like his derp cousin that just gets to be a cave, like, but doesn't know to like actually. So eat. here's here's <laughs> something that here's something to think about too. Is that they mentioned this in the book and in the in the film a little bit, but they kind of make reference to Pennywise not just being like from outer space, mm-hmm. but being like from like, like they, they kind of no dimension. the other dimensional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you're fucking around with like different dimensions, that goes even outside of the realm of outer space itself. So, I mean, the, the, yeah. the possibilities are, are practically endless. Ergo his counter, his counterpart being a fucking turtle. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, oh, oh That's my gosh. Space God turtle. Mark, mark the time. Oh, cause, cause you don't yes. know about this. Stu has, been, he been, run. Stu has been chomping at the bit about the fucking turtle. Please run. What I turtle? want to hear what oh. you yeah, no, what, what, what the All fuck right. is a turtle? We're going to turn it over to Stu. Stu Go. Okay, no, okay, no, keep in mind. This is like 20 years since I read the book. Well, at least 20 years. But its counterpart in the world or in the universe is a space turtle god. <laughs> space turtle god? Yes. yes. So if Satan is it, <laughs> yes. then space, space turtle, turtle god would be yes. god. Yes. We just ruined yes. it for Ron. I mean, like, what? No, no. No, no. This movie. no, no. Yeah, exactly. No, no. It's, See, it's Ron will love it because Ron loves turtles. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> space turtle god? Yes. Um, so he's- uh, I thought the, he was the, a spider. The, 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 no, it no, no. is uh, the closest embodiment uh, you know, in our universe is that weird spider thing for yeah. it. So yeah. the his- Antithesis would be the turtle, the, the, the good guy. What the it, fuck was Stephen it, yeah. King smoking? Exactly. Oh, and, and was, but things. the turtle god is the one who actually got the losers together, and the turtle god is the one who you know realized they needed to all be together because they all had their own strengths and weaknesses, and they uh, as a group they're the ones who could actually defeat this evil. So I, this is so, something and then he's was, also I took it that he kind of also rewarded them in their adult life, and they were all became successful. Uh, you know, for the, for their fight, and so the turtle god kind of gave them. All right, you're a famous fashionista. You're a famous architect. You're a famous Sucks writer. If your name is Stan. Uh, yeah, no. So I hey, wanted Stan to say- seemed to be really fucking happy in his life. Until he had to call, go back to Derry. Yeah, that's true. Everything they showed, Stan seemed to be very happy. No, his life was good. All up until right. Then. All right. But no, so I will I will throw this out there. Except too. for Mike, who didn't leave fucking Derry. He couldn't get out of the evil. So he, his life sucked. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he lived but, in the poor house still. He fucking was a librarian. Well, he lived like in the movie. Hey. He lived like in the attic of the library. <laughs> do you do you want to be no, that? No, 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 no. I just said the bash about librarians. <laughs> We're going to get it angry. angry Nobody angry. grows up and says, My I want to be a librarian when I grow My up. My aunt did, you dick. <laughs> she, she, that's what she yes, wanted she to be? Yes, she has her master's in library sciences. She wanted just, to be a librarian, you I'm ass sorry, monkey. That's fucking <laughs> You're <laughs> such a douche. <laughs> I, do, I, I, I do know that. And you what? know her. Okay, <laughs> for those, for those, for those. For those just librarians, just apologize and let's move on. For those librarians that I'm are listening, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. For those librarians that are listening, we uh, we love you and and don't listen to. You're you're needed. You're absolutely you're, needed. You're, you're very important. No, he's like, but so, nobody so, grows so up so says I want to be a librarian. Hey, hey Lenny, up. do you hear that beeping sound? That's how fast he's backing nope. up. Nope. Yeah. So, I had an interesting like thought when I was watching these movies. It was something that was kind of you know, and I don't know because again, I haven't gone all the way through the books. So I don't know if this blatantly is said in the book. So if it is, then. 
whatever, but I hadn't read it yet. So, you know, I kept thinking about like how there are certain kids that that it has floating. And then there are certain kids that he straight up fucking kills and eats right right on the spot. And I feel like what you said earlier, like, yeah, he has some that he 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 sees something in them that's like, okay, I can feast off of that for a while. So those are the ones that float. And then the other ones that he kills on an immediate basis, they're just immediate fix he needs. Mm-hmm. Now, I kept thinking to myself. Wait, okay. why, why do they float in the first place? What's the whole point of that? I, I don't. That's just, think of a spider. Yeah, the dead lights. That's all. Yeah, so the dead lights keep them like up. like they're in a web, but you just can't see the web. Okay. Unless you're, you're watching the original there. miniseries, and then there's fucking web everywhere. Yeah, yes. then they're in an actual spider web. I, It honestly kind of reminded me of, like, the birth chamber and, like, aliens and shit. That yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I but anyway, so the theory that I, I, I kind of came up with was, <sighs> I was wondering, like, why is it that he doesn't straight up murder these these seven kids right away and and why he toys with them so much and why he because there are several moments where he could have like uh, I, think he, I think he has an obsession with just playing no, no, around no no no, no, no. I, have, I have a very it good makes theory the meat sweeter well and i have i have a really good theory for this too he, like with eddie for instance when he was fucking with him and, pit, and upsetting him he could have fucking killed him 10 times over before they came in the room and stabbed him in the face with that iron rod but here's the thing i honestly and truly believe uh, just as theory is that those seven kids he fucked with them and fucked with them and fucked with them and did the same thing as when they became adults because he must have sensed that somehow they were touched or they were chosen by the turtle. And so he knew that in Fucking order... turtle. So, in, and I know, listen, but listen. You respect the turtle. That's right. All right. Don't make sense. Question I, I the never, turtle. Okay, go ahead. So Sorry. In, order to, in order to really We're all just able, riding on his back, okay? <laughs> technically so, on the back of an uh, elephant being held by the turtle. Yes. You have derailed. No, so with the... With the uh, with with Pennywise and these kids, I think that it's not so easy for him to just kill them. Like, because they are chosen by this turtle or chosen by this counterpart, and he knows that or he senses it off of them, he has to, like, do so much, like, to really fuck with their minds and really fuck with them before he can finally make that 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 strike. Right. And I, and I you know, th- that's the only thing I could come up with. Because I'm like, why these seven kids? What, what makes them so special? Especially with them being... Much more, um, he's, he's not able to just take them out when the seven of them are together as a group. And I think, I really do think that they were, you know, chosen or, or had something about them that he felt that was coming from that turtle. So he's like, well, I've got to really fuck with them before I can, I can actually kill them. Like, there's some well, they're the only ones that really challenged him. No, no, they're, they're well, the yeah. only way he could die. And I think it is in that same yeah. vein, like maybe it knows that. And he's like, oh shit, these kids are, oh shit, there's seven of them in a group. Shit. Like, honestly, like almost like a prophecy type thing. But yeah. I got to say that, that I, I don't know. And, and this is a good segue for this. What did you guys think of like the ending for both movies when it came to like battling the, 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 the it thing? Um, is this in perspective of the book as well? Well, see, that's just it. I didn't get the ending from the, the for the book yet, but I know that like- Ever? Not yet. Well, no. I, I this is my first time re- listening to the book. So. What? Yes. Yeah. I've never yeah, listened. I to knew before. you read it. I could have yeah. sworn. No, 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 no. He no. said he wanted to, and he had started it. I started. I didn't even finish it. So, anyway, so in the miniseries, like he turns into that fucking claymation, fucking spider yes. thing, and I, when I, I thought I, it was cool. I, I, no, <laughs> even as a kid, I was watching it. And I was like, what? Here, Lenny, was, you're you're a Harry Potter fan, right? Pinchers. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It was so fucking dumb. I was like, what the fuck is this? I will say, though, nod to this one scene that I loved was when um, <laughs> the adult fucking Eddie is like, this is battery acid, and now you're going to disappear. And he squirts the, the, the spider, and the oh, spider like, literally goes, fuck you, and picks him up and just fucking kills him. I was like, yes, <laughs> fuck Eddie, that oh, little see, fucking loser. I love the, the oh, current version great. with Tozier when he's like, yeah, you mother. Yeah, he goes, yippee-ki-yay, mother. That was, that was fucking great. cool. So the ending scene, you know, and I, and I, you know, I will say this, um, definitely there is some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like leeway or, or, um, grace is given to the fact that the nineties version versus the new version, there's, there's definitely limitations on technology and all that. I will say that, 
but especially made for TV versus made for yeah, actual. Film. But that's what I'm saying. And and when it was made for TV, that spider actually looked pretty decent for a TV movie in yeah. the nineties. And I, well, I, yeah, because it relied on nineteen seventies tech. You know, I not say special. This practical, practical. Yeah. I yeah. think the fight in the final battle in the newer one was cooler. But I want to say that the actual killing of the the it, I preferred. The television series where he where takes it, he's like stabs him. Well, and, like, and then they just start Crap. fucking ripping his guts out. Yeah. He pulls hard. I no, I, because it's stupid. Because listen, I liked how he shrunk, go, and I thought I that thought was... that was stupid. Okay, so they start <laughs> saying harsh words no, to I the fucking was, spider, that's right. and then he that's right. Shrinks, they hurt like, his feelings. And then, and then he turns into he hurt his hold feelings. Hold on, so then he turns back. Don't care about feelings. So older now, so taller. That was okay. You know what? Hold on. This is what I gotta say about that whole thing. Okay, but here's the the funny thing. You know, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's what I had to say about that. Oh my god! Oh, you're so much older now. I'm this little tiny midget, and oh, please don't pull my heart out. Ew, ew. But Fuck here's that. That was stupid. No, 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 I, I didn't and, mind and, it. I, no, no. Honestly, and I, I never mind. So yeah. So ultimately, just I don't know them them using harsh language to make the spider turn into a little tiny midget that they pull his heart out, and then oh yeah, we win. I think that was stupid compared to like they fought in the first movie. They fought the spider. They they were like, "Fuck you! We're not scared of you. We're gonna we're gonna come at you, even though you're terrifying looking." And they ended up knocking him down and pulling his fucking heart out and doing all this stuff. I liked that better. I will say though that the final battle in the new movie, like the spider, looked cooler. The special effects were definitely cooler, but just the way it finally ended, it was I thought it was fucking too. stupid. So that's my opinion. But uh, what, what, what do you guys? What's your what's y'all's? Go take? ahead, Ron. Okay, uh, I'll take it. Oh, never mind. Do it. Do it, Sammy. No, Sammy. Take it right from him. Actually, Sammy, go ahead. take it. Uh, we'll listen to you first. All right. So, for me, I, um, I, all right. So, I'm kind of like at a 60 40 okay. between them. And the reason why is because, like, I love the original, like, the miniseries. I do like the, the energy, like, that, that tribal, like, eviscerating the enemy, like, yeah. ripping them apart thing. I think that's great. Yeah. That being said, I liked, I, I get, um, and I'm sure Stu will have a different opinion than me. What else is new? However, like I liked in the newer version, like them cowling him down and making him like that. Like, cause I'm sorry, like I understand there's a bunch of dudes on this, but words fucking hurt, even if you have a, you know, whatever. Moving on. So, like that being said, I think like that part was kind of cool because you had this such a big fucking bully, just like literally shrunken down to nothing. However, I feel like if they had like, Fucking like Ben gets some balls in the new version and straight up like steel toe fucking Pennywise like mash his head right in the face and then like rip out his heart and then like fucking like if there was more veracity in how they like kill yeah they're, Pennywise, they're almost gentle yeah at they're the like end, oh like, even to the point the Pennywise like like you know scream scare <laughs> and then they're like oh he's dying it's okay let's take out his heart let's take out his heart nice and, and now, gentle oh, like now we're gonna make mean eyes <laughs> like it was stupid <laughs> thank you that part okay, was stupid no. I honestly feel like had I fucking Ben or somebody come up and be like, fuck okay. you, clown, boom, and like fucking rip that shit out and then this ate it, bit you know, it. You know what? Bit it. It. All right, no, see, that that, that that would have been funny if all of them just took a bite out of the heart. That would have been, you know, they were they were eating. They look at him like, always trying nom, to eat nom, them. Nom, nom. But in my exactly. opinion, and then like, it my, it became them. Then, then, yes. It becomes oh, the, in turn, had, they would become time. cannibals. You're talking yeah. about ants? No, they would have become ants. No, what? What? <laughs> Ants from oh, the movie Them. This spider made them. There's into a movie ants. called Them, and okay. it's big ants. No. Oh, these are dumbass. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about what that. it became, the <laughs> Losers <laughs> Club. The, and, and then you had multiple versions of it, and they could go to different towns, and then and then start the process spread. all over again. Oh god. Oh, oh that'd have been amazing. Yeah, actually, we need a penny well, verse. <laughs> my, my opinion is, I actually like the newer version better for the ending. Yes, the CGI was. You could tell it was major CGI and everything, but him shrinking down to size and all of them. He's based. It's, he's based reversing the fear. That's what he's doing. They're reversing the fear on him because they're trying to make the kids, or, or actually the older adults, afraid of him. But now it's afraid of them. So he's and he's shrinking. I think it worked perfectly. And the fact that, yeah, it, I know you're you understand that you don't like that they pull the heart. He's like look, looking like he's all like dying and everything, and flat so his head all stupid. flattening and everything. But I thought it worked out. Now well, the original, now. But, but the thing but, is, I also give kudos to the original because I thought that the giant spider was kind of cool. I thought the you could see Pennywise's eyes on the spider, and it just worked out perfectly. I know it was big, just a big mechanical spider that they built, but it looked good for its time, and I thought that was good too. And you could see all of them just just kicking at it and just uh, punching at it. 
it and just like trying to get that fucking heart out with their bare hands. They don't have any weapons yeah, or anything. They were like, fuck you. They started ripping his guts so out. So if that I were to give cool. a review. Using him as his own weapon. I, I'd almost yeah. give it a, believe it or not, I, I, I'd give it a 50-50 on both of them. I think both of them are good in their own way. That's how I'd see it. Both of them are good in their own way. I did like in the new one, the snuffing out of the deadlights in his eyes. I thought that was a, a yeah. especially nice yeah. touch. Because yeah. again, the eyes are so prominent. In, yeah. in the book. But again, next. Yeah, but how about you, Stu? How about yours? Switch. What's your opinion? Okay. Um, now I'm going to go why you two are wrong oh, and why course. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so like, mm. uh, just from straight story aspect. Um, like, now, special Versus effects, Kirby of course. Story? No, just because, like, you know, special effects. Yes, it looked so much cooler in the, the more one than the, the, the miniseries. Absolutely looks so much you fucking You realize better. you already have a bias going in because you're the only one that enjoyed it in youth, right? <laughs> <laughs> Eh, I don't care. <laughs> um, so, the fact that the entire story is basically a uh, an analogy of facing your fear of growing into adulthood and facing and coming to, to face your demons, but and. In the new one, the way they beat their demons is become the same demons that they had been bullied by their entire fucking life. The bullies that had taken them down, called them names, taken away their fucking power, they became those exact same fucking assholes to fucking Pennywise. Uh, at least in the miniseries, are. they went ahead, they took their power back and be- had belief in themselves, belief in their uh, their items and their, their objects, and used those beliefs to destroy the fear, destroy this horrible, uh, looming presence, and that is what gave them the power. Not the bullying, not calling them names, not saying, you're just a fucking clown, you're just an old lady, Lady. No, and they went ahead and like this is fucking battery acid. Shh. Burn the motherfucker, stabbing him with goddamn spears, fucking ripping him apart with their bare fucking hands, using a slingshot. They, yes, using a slingshot, with which the silver, which super space turtle god is the reason he chose Bev. Could we go ahead and be the, the fucking uh, part oh of the crew god. because yeah. of her superpower of goddamn uh, aiming? All right, instead of and, yeah, that's, I, that's a whole other fucking thing. We'll go in the next one, but that, that pissed me off that, that he disrespected you hear turtle how god. Over you, my face is saying, <laughs> no, and you're wrong. I've got to say, <laughs> Stop I got to say, catch light at me <laughs> to kind of jump on what Stu was saying there too. Is that yeah. Like, when they destroy the spider and they're ripping his guts out, as an audience, you're like, fuck yeah, fuck that spider. Again, I said 60-40. Uh, I know, but I'm just saying, like, but with, like, the little tiny, like, uh, and he's, like, stuck against the thing. Now it's like you're watching these adults. Beat the be, shit out of a midget. All right? It's wrong. It is wrong. So like, you're going to, wait a minute. So the you're story have, story you're sorry for you. No, it. I'm midget. saying it, it, it made them into the people that they, that we were rooting. It made them into a bunch of Henry Bowers. In that moment, all right? No, yes, no, 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 no. Then by that logic, then, then you know, Batman also has, you know, whatever. Like, no. like I'm Batman sorry. doesn't go and call people fucking names and be like, no, he know? just beats the shit out of them. Yeah. That's what he does. He stole the little lady person when he beats the shit out of them. mocking them in the quippy lines. No, no. Yes, he is. Only in, in the, only in the Adam West version is using the quippy lines. Are you basically saying it's like Garvey. not a fair fight at it, the end? It's, it's. it's 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 disrespectful to all the the work that they had gone through, the growing that they had become, and just to turn them back into bullies. See, that's why you feel that, like the original is yes, better. It's, it, they, for the story reason, the miniseries was a better overarching story than the ending that the new one gave us. Story reason why? Okay, so we all have a different opinion. Well, actually, Lenny and uh, Stu's are about the same, but but we, you know what, Ron? Band. They're wrong. Ooh. So it's oh, fine. Oh, uh, now I'm like in the wrong I, I did 50 50 on both no, no, of them. We want to hear alliance. from you, the audience. <laughs> do, do you agree with the winners you that are myself? You your seat. And That's right. Spicy Boner! Fuck! Fuck! Spicy Boner! Spicy Boner! Spicy Boner! I did. It. I did. It. As soon as it came out my mouth, too. As soon as it came out my mouth. I brought you in Lenny Vision. See, unfortunately, I chose oh. a name that has the same, like. Yeah. There's your punish shots, buddy. Hypnotic yep, 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 yep. for your ass. Quiet, Benny. <laughs> Benny. <laughs> Has that hypnotic taste? Like a uh, clown just came in my mouth. Oh, that's perfect for this. <laughs> show. It looks like it. It's like nice and turquoise. Exactly. Look. So Pennywise um, would. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap up this episode. Um, based off of what you've heard, you know what our opinions are as far as like which Pennywise that we like. That's basically what we covered here. The next episode, we're going to be discussing the two different like losers clubs, the two different films, giving our opinions of each. One of the things that we're going to put out there for you guys that like to listen to our show and have been following us for a little while now, we would love to get your feedback on Instagram. What we're going to do is we're going to put out a poll, and we would love to hear what y'all think 
each one of us which Losers Club character we we identify with, like who you think that we most resemble. And then in that next episode, we're also going to be discussing the Loser Club members and who we feel that we identify with. And we'll just kind of see like who, you know, who was right and whatever else. Because plus, we love to get your feedback on what you think of us, what do you think of our personalities, good, bad, and indifferent. So we're really looking forward to the next episode, like I said, and we will see you guys then. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. We are so excited for the upcoming episodes headed your way and bonus episodes of The Small Batch, Sammy Selects, and now The New Tasting Room. If you like our show, please spread the word, give us a like, or leave us some kind of review on any of the social media pages. Give us a follow on Instagram, Barrel Flicks, or Facebook, Barrel Age Flicks. Our podcast is available on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, CastBox, YouTube, and now Pandora. Please shoot us an email at BarrelAgeFlix at Gmail with comments and movie suggestions for future shows or any other things you'd like to let us know. Credit to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube. Man, your music is awesome. We thank you so much for that. It's great. You guys go ahead and check him out. I just want to say thank you so much. We hope to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening. See you then.